Our speaker this evening is not a guest, but a friend of Hillsdale College. Guests come and go. Friends are here to stay. Don Toko discovered Hillsdale College when reading an Imprimus newsletter in November of 2002. He quickly realized our higher purpose and our challenges. Recognizing we provide a great environment for a true liberal arts education without government funding um, motivated him to provide a personal and financial investment in Hillsdale College. To begin, Don founded the Toko Sports Challenge in 2002 to compete with our best athletes for a scholarship money each year. When we won, he gave us $25,000. Due to his win-loss record of seven and three, he reinvested his winnings into a generous annuity for us here at Hillsdale College. Soon after coming to campus, he was invited to serve on the President's Advisory Board and judge the Everett Oratory Competition. He, was com he completed a sculpture in our Arts Center and helped us to save over $2 million on our building programs. In 2006, he tried out for our baseball team and made the cut. In 2010, he was given the coveted Hillsdale Honorary Alumnus Award. Mr. Toko's proving ground is the marketing company he started at the age of only 27, while $40,000 in debt, no mentors or business background. Today, the North American operation has served over 700 corporations with collective um, sales surpassing $5 billion. His messages on leadership have been heard by students from 70 countries and across every state of the United States of America over the past 25 years. He has spoken on the campuses of the University of Michigan, Ohio State University, Michigan State University, Arizona State, Tufts University, Rice University, Johns Hopkins University, and many others. But most importantly, he comes to Hillsdale College. Don has brought us together tonight in the spirit of learning, fun, and financial support for many of our organizations because he believes that some of the finest future leaders attend Hillsdale College. Many of us here can speak to our personal contact with Don and how we have benefited from his advice and from his wisdom. Personally, I found him to be an inspiring mentor and a very fine friend. Tonight, his topic is art of the journey, as understood in three particular contexts. First, the art of our own journey. Second, the art he has created on his own journey that he'll be donating to the college for future scholarship money. And thirdly, he will be reading selections from his book, Art of the Journey. This information can be a genuine roadmap toward our future life's ambitions, and professional objectives. So for some exciting ideas on ultimate destiny, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm Hillsdale welcome to Mr. Don Toko. Wow. I'm gonna take, uh, take this guy on the road with me. Thank you, Razi, for that warm, sincere, had a wonderful introduction. It was done like a paid professional. But I honestly would expect that from the president of the class of 2018. Let's give him some appreciation. <laughs> man, Roger. Yeah. You know, these things don't just uh, happen like magic. Uh, and there's always somebody important. There's always a team behind these events, and I'd like you to also recognize Ashlyn Lander and her team for putting this all together and making it look so easy. Ashlyn, thank you. Yeah. And also for helping to fill the front row. My eyes are really not very good, and I can't see anybody past the first row, so now I feel I got some company. <laughs> This is uh, always my favorite day of the year because I love coming to this campus. I love the feeling when I'm driving toward Hillsdale. And today, the smell of spring in the air. Was it not marvelous? I mean, you can feel the excitement in the air, can't you? It's palpable. I'm thinking, what is it? Is it because it's the first day of, really it's the first day of spring that we've noticed? Or, or could it be, could it be that the seniors are so excited 
about departing this campus, going into the real world, and making a difference? Or could it be the freshmen who are saying, Whew, got through the first tough year. Is it a tough year, freshmen? First year tough? Where are the freshmen at? You know what, I don't know where my audience is because I'm going to be making reference to seniors, juniors. So please, let's, start, let's start with, let's honor the seniors. Would all the seniors please stand? I'd like to see who we are. Let me see who you are. Please stand. Yes. Well. You guys a little bit nervous? about leaving the confines of this awesome place and stepping out into the real world, you should be. You should be. You should be a little bit fearful. But we know that where there's no fear, there's no opportunity for courage. And uh, freshmen, uh, now what we have here, uh, because we have the four, um, you know, the four stages of college education, and I have a little information, certain information for each group, so could I see the freshmen? Would you please stand? Because you've never heard. Let's give some, yeah, sure. The freshmen over here. Okay. Now, is it, is it true, freshmen, none of you have heard me in the past. Is that correct? Okay, good, because I have important information for you. Now, it will be new to you, for you seniors, there's going to be a little bit of a review, and as well for the uh, juniors who heard some of this information a couple of years ago in a presentation that I entitled, Learning How to Fly. So your first homework assignment, you freshmen, and we don't call it homework, really, we call it home opportunity, is to go on my website, dontoco.net, and watch the entirety of Learning How to Fly. Watch it this summer. This will give you a great foundation, but I'm going to be sharing some ideas from that presentation. Now, in all fairness, I don't, I'm not here often, and I couldn't be here were it not for several great people. One is your illustrious, and he is, your illustrious president, the good Dr. Larry R. And how many love Larry? You gotta love Larry, come on. Everybody loves Larry Arn. I love Larry Arn. He introduced me 16 years ago for my first presentation. It was 40 minutes. His introduction to me, for me, was 18 minutes. I'm like, Dr. Arn. <laughs> oh, it was beautiful. He goes, Toko, you got plenty of time to talk. Also, I would not be here if I were not succeeding in my own career and if I didn't have good customers. So last year at this time, uh, sadly, on the day that I spoke, which was April 20th, on that very day, I lost my oldest and best customer, John Lavrakis. He was actually Captain John Lavrakis, retired United States Marine Corps. He passed at the age of 102. He passed the very day while I was driving to give my annual address here. And it was so devastating to me, it was so sad to me, that I honestly wanted to turn around and go home because my heart was broken. And yet, I said, you know what? I'm gonna be with friends and I'm just gonna let that heart open up and pour out. And uh, indeed it did. Now, as we fast forward to the early part of 2018, I have another very, had another very dear friend who for 18 years, uh, we went to church every Sunday, our families, and uh, he never ceased to pray for me when I was going to be doing a program for you. So Hillsdale College had a saint, had a wonderful guy, who was praying for you and praying for me. And we always had a lot of good things happening. Well, on January 4th this past year, this year, four months ago, my little buddy Ted Andrus also has met the Lord. And the last thing I asked him when I saw him, the last day I saw him alive, I said, Ted, I will be sharing ideas with my fine, young, very intelligent, competent friends from Hillsdale College in the spring. I said, what advice would you like me to pass along to them? 
that would help them to have an even more successful life. And he said, from his deathbed, tell them to thank God for every single day because it is a gift. And tell them, do not look back. Always be looking forward. So while Theodore Andrus is uh, no longer back in Royal Oak praying for us, I fully suspect he is present here in a greater capacity. Now I thought that that was going to be it. Okay? I'm dedicating this to my friend Ted Andrus, my great prayer partner, spiritual teacher. But no, 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 no. And God said, you know, uh, Don, you're going to have to deal with yet one more. And so two weeks ago, my longest living best friend, longest living 47 years of friendship, failed to be able to contain his cancer, and he died two weeks ago. He was a Marine, lived a robust, exciting, meaningful life. Somebody else that I pray with on a regular basis. So tonight, I dedicate this program, Art of the Journey, to two great friends who indeed did understand how to master the art of their journey, Steve Comick and Ted Andrus. And so in a quiet moment tonight, when you're thinking about perhaps what we shared this evening, know that these things are not possible singularly. We must have support. We must have friends. We must have believers. Those are mine. Say a little prayer for their departed souls. I thank you in advance for that. Now, why am I here? The freshman, okay, here's Don Toko. Well, well, here he is again. Why am I here? I am here, and I will say this. I've said it 16, I've said it 15 times, so I'll say it again tonight. I believe Hillsdale College is unequivocally the best liberal arts school in America. I think, in fact, it's the best college in America. I think it is the place... It's going to be the tipping point for the future of this country if we are to survive. If we are to survive the aggressive attack of the progressives. You are learning how to articulate the force of a conservative. You are living the life of Christians, of theists, of good people, God's people. If you do not step up, if you are not willing to take the challenge, if all you want to do is get a good job, well, I get that, that's great. But if that's all you want is a good job and your little family tucked in a corner somewhere, it's not going to cut it. Because the America that I saw when I was your age doesn't exist anymore. The America I saw when I was 40 doesn't exist anymore. We are under attack. We are under siege. And so I'm here once again and for the 16th year to say that I fully expect and hope and anticipate that in this room there will be one day at least a half a dozen people who have committed themselves to the highest form of government. Aristotle said, the wise man who refuses to engage in politics will suffer at the hands of lesser men. My young friends, we are suffering. The highest service that you can provide to this country, to your nation, is to serve in government. Not as a job, but as a passion, as an act of Christianity, as an act of humanitarianism. Do not shirk the opportunity in 20, 30 years from now when I'm really old and I can say wow, America is alive and well and I know some of its top leaders they actually went to Hillsdale College could I hear it for the future leaders from Hillsdale College, could I hear it for you guys yeah Yeah. 
When I'm getting excited, I'm getting, I'm excited to be here. Is anybody excited to, to be alive, to be here tonight? That's a, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's exciting to be alive. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you right now, I feel good. I'm just about to the point of, I feel great. Now, uh, some years ago, maybe uh, seniors, who remembers the story of the greatest salesman in the world who sold six cars on average every single working day for 12 years? Anybody remember that story? Where are those seniors at? Who was that guy? His name was Joe Girard. Joe Girard. Sold six cars. I mean, think about it. Six cars on average every day for 12 years. That's crazy. Who can do that? Well, he was a good friend of mine, and I, I asked him, I said, uh, well, after I knew him for a couple of years, I don't want to embarrass myself. I said, Joe, tell me the truth. How did you do that? How did you get those people to move into action and buy your cars? I said, you must have, uh, must have had a heck of a price. <laughs> we cut the price on those Chevys, man. Oh, he said, no, he said, they didn't. They didn't always get the best price. He said, they always got the best, Joe Girard. He said, Don, you know what I was selling? I was selling myself. I was selling my enthusiasm. I said, Joe, wow. I said, how in the world could you stay excited all the time? Golly, he said, I finally figured out how to do that. He said, I'd get up in the morning and I'd put on a nice suit, sport coat. And I'd go to a full-length garage, full-length uh, mirror on the door to my garage. And I would look at myself in that mirror, and I'd say, Joe, you look like the kind of person that someone would want to buy a car from today. Handsome devil that I am, I always said yes to, to that one. He said, then I asked myself, do you have the energy, the enthusiasm to cause people to move to your way of thinking? And he says, it wasn't always the case. He says, and that is, was the time I would go into action. I would take charge of my attitude machine. See, you and I have the ability to take charge of our attitude machine every minute of every day. He'd look at himself when he didn't feel adequately enthused, and he'd say, I feel good. I feel great. Look out, world. I'm coming out one more time. Now, how did you start your day today? Oh, boy, what is the 23rd, eh? Man, oh, man, I'm not even ready for that class. Yeah, I'm graduating. I'm graduating. <laughs> Guys, attitude machine, enthusiasm, it moves things. It moves people. Let me experiment right here. I'd like to take this half. I'd like this dynamic part of Hillsdale College to be the, I feel good. i like this side to be the, don't get arrogant, I feel great. I mean, you're not that much, but you might be just a little. Well, I'd like to, let, let's see if we can have a little activity. Get the, get the hearts on this side here. I feel good. I feel good. Ooh, that's pretty good. One more time. I feel, I feel good. good. On this side, the I feel greats. I feel great. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. You goods are, I'm telling you, I think you just got wiped out. You better give it to me one more time. Here we go. On this side. I feel. Everybody together. I feel good. I feel great. Oh, man. Where's Joe? I know he's, he's up there, too. Joe, isn't this great? Give yourself some appreciation. That is great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I believe you. I believe you. Uh, you are good and you are great. Your bloodline here at Hillsdale College is remarkable. For you freshmen, you probably don't know that when Abraham Lincoln was assassinated and his, cats, his casket was, was borne by, by pallbearers, two of those young men were military men that had actually gone to Hillsdale College. Did you know that? Part of the Republican Party, the early Republican Party, was actually founded here in Hillsdale, the early Republican Party. This is an amazing place. The bloodline is, is rich with history. True American history. And uh, you are, uh, you're going to be carrying that banner. And it's going to start with you doing something really powerful. And that's you becoming the best possible you.
compared to nobody else. Yeah, you're in a family, and you're in a competitive environment, but what really matters is you becoming the best you. There's a term for that. It's actually a Greek term. How many have been down to the gym? The gym, the gym downstairs. How many have been down to the gym? Only four people? <laughs> Let me tell you, there's a gym you got down here? <laughs> okay, so on that equipment, on that equipment, in case you haven't been there, there's a word, and the word is arete, A-R-E-T-E. It is a Greek term. How, what a surprise. It's a Greek term. I actually was honored to bring that term to the school 16 years ago. It was adopted by the athletic teams, particularly the football team. And when they won their 2009 championship, they put arete on the ring. What is arete? Arete means to become the best possible you compared to no one else. The best possible you. Can I hear that word ring out in a great Hillsdale voice? The word is arete. Everybody together. <laughs> okay. Okay. Where's she at? Let's go. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. I just want to make sure <laughs> I just want to make sure you got it. I'm here to share and teach and I got to make sure you got it. If you don't get it, I'm wasting my time. I'm not wasting my time here. I know I'm not. So one time, everybody together, the word is arete. Means the best you. Never ending process. God's always working on our self-improvement. And so part of that self-improvement is learning how to develop an art of our own journey. As uh, Razi said in the introduction, we have this interesting play on words about the topic. This, tonight's lesson is art of the journey. I want you to have a sense that you can create your life's journey and make it an art form. You can make your life an art form. And uh, how do we do that? I mean, how, how, do we, how, do we, how do we take the genius of your professors that, they've, that they're imparting incredible wisdom and knowledge into your minds and into your hearts? How do you parlay that in the world? You parlay that in the world not through academic concept. You put it into action through principle. And there are five basic principles that you must use to drive your uniqueness home to the world that you're going to be living and resonating in. And I will tell you right now, if you think you're going very far and you're going to be walking around with a frown on your face and talking in low tones with your shoulders down and your head down, it's not going to happen. The only way you're going to be making your mark, and you will, the first thing you and I must possess is a burning desire. That's an intense feeling down inside that says, I can, I want to, and I will. It's the passion of the girls' softball team. Am I right, ladies? Are we here tonight? Oh, they're practicing, okay. And how about the, the, the girls' tennis team or some of the track stars? It is a burning desire down inside that moves people to go beyond the norm. And you are beyond the norm in every possibility. Your intellect, in fact, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the freshman class had the highest score, average, GPA, am I correct? Did you know about that about yourselves? Yeah, yeah he knows. SAT, GPA. You come to the school, you're brilliant. You're brilliant. But brilliant is not what brilliant is. Brilliant is what brilliant does. And you will make incredible things happen if you light up. Let that passion be seen through a burning desire. Entheos. Greek term means spirit within. That is God within. That's not some fake thing. That is God within. 
So we want God within to be able to get out and be seen in our behavior and our, our attitudes, our positive attitudes. And as I mentioned, the best example that, that really, I, really I've ever known is my friend Joe Girard's passion toward life, passion toward selling. In fact, that's why I wore this red thing here, this red hanky. I didn't wear that because I was thinking it was Christmas is coming. It was about passion. The passion. I want your passion to come alive for everything you do that matters. So burning desire. So that's the first step. That's the first step. And there's actually five principles, and I'm going to go through them very quickly. So step number one, you and I must possess a burning desire. Everybody together say have a burning desire. Yeah, man, now you're getting it. All right. We're getting in sync here. Let's keep this rolling. Second thing, second thing, you are marvelously unique. Marvelously, wonderfully unique. You are so unique. I mean, God spent a lot of time making you perfect for who you are. That's why we don't want to compare ourselves with other people. Yes, let us learn from others, but let us not compare because there'll never be another you. So, now, in that development of uniqueness and that passion, the thing we have to really, what really sets, sets us apart will be the ideas we move forward on, that we're motivated to move forward on, those are our objectives for life. Our goals, objectives, plans for a career, a great career, health, a uh, wonderful family, service, uh, in the community. So objectives are things that we, this is where we say, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. What do we do? We say, God, show me. Show me what I'm supposed to be doing. And we wait and we listen and we watch for answers. And then one day there's an inspiration. You get an inspiration and you know that that's something special. That is a divine inspiration. And so we begin to set our objectives, our goals. When I came here this evening, there were about 10 of you guys and gals at the table out there checking folks in. And I ask, what's the major? What's your major? Politi political economy, political science, um, you know, it's uh, 10 different answers, right? That's, that's, that's self resonating with God, God resonating itself. What's your plan? How clear is your plan? Where will you be 10 years from now? Where will you be? Exactly where you plan to be. If you don't have a plan, you're at the mercy of the winds of life. Get your plan written down and get it clear. And make sure it is a short-term, long-term, well-defined, reviewed on a regular, regular basis. Uh, I mentioned in the, you know, this idea of goals and objectives, family, career, finances, health. In 1982, I had the honor of, actually it was 1981, I had the honor of uh, meeting uh, Master uh, Shang Q Shim, who was the uh, Chuck Norris uh, karate instructor. And, uh, ooh. Uh, he was a cool dude. I mean, this guy was, uh, he, he was a rock star. And so we were talking. It was a Halloween party, and I didn't know who he was. I was just talking to him. And I had the feeling he might have been in karate. And I said to him, uh, you know, were you... Uh, you in karate? And he said, yes, I am. I said, oh. I said, are you a black belt? He said, yes, I am. I said, were you like a third or fourth degree? He goes, no, a ninth degree. Whew. I said, whoa, ninth degree. I mean, this guy, you know, that's why he was Chuck Norris' instructor, right? The guy was one of the best in the world. So I asked him this question. I said, what do you consider the most important thing in life? Without any hesitation, he said, discipline, discipline. I said, how do you define discipline? He said, discipline is that which I do every single day. I said, what do you do every day? He said, I train and I meditate, meaning he exercised and he prayed. And so I went home that night and thought about what, I, what he said after, you know, for five, six, seven days. And I said, am I going to actually meet a world famous martial artist and not have any takeaway from that? 
Now, what is takeaway? Takeaway is not knowledge. It's what you do with it. And so I decided one week later, which was, uh, you know, uh, November 7th or 8th, because this was a Halloween party, right? So I said, I'm going to do something with this. And the th something I'm going to do is I'm going to start to exercise every single day. And I'm going to pray every day. So I started getting out of bed, rolling on my knees, first thing out of bed, on my knees, then onto the floor to exercise. And I actually did that uh, 12,582 days, roughly 26 or something, 28 years. And in those, those 12,500, I, I did miss, uh, I did miss three days. So, I don't know what exactly you want, but I promise you this. If you will employ the power of discipline while you're following the urges of God, there is nothing you cannot achieve. So, I would like you to, this evening, begin to think bigger than you have ever thought in your life. Now, it doesn't have to be tonight, but it can start tonight if you like. Maybe it'll start tomorrow. I want you to start thinking about possibilities of things you can do with your life, with your uniquenesses, with this great education, with your network of friends. And I will tell you, this is a great network of friends to have. Keep this network. Keep it. Build upon it. Because you're special. Master Shank Yu Shim. I'm going to read to you a short and true story because I know a lot of times when the stress is really high and you just are thinking, man, I just, wow, you know, studied 70 hours straight. I can't do, I can't do another five, two minutes. And when you get into the real world, see, the, beautiful, the beauty of school, the beauty of an education like this is you will be prepared to take on any career in the world. Nobody works, nobody works harder on a job than you guys work at getting an education. I don't know anybody. I know a lot of people. But in case you get into a situation where you start running out of gas and you go, I don't know, I, I, I'm just going to, you know, flop down here and stop. Just remember this story. More than 15,000 runners entered the New York City Marathon in October. This was back in 1982. The race started at 10.30 a.m. and Seven hours later, 13,609 runners had completed the 26.4-mile course. Darkness began to fall, and cleanup crews were taking down the barricades and sweeping up the litter. But the race wasn't over. A lone young woman, her aluminum crutches glinting in the streetlights, was still making her way along the course. Linda Downs, born with cerebral palsy, was determined to finish the race. Linda had to move carefully. If she put her crutch down on a piece of litter, it would slip off from under her. Six times she fell, and six times she got up again and kept moving. Someone alerted a television station and the camera crew began to follow her slow progress. At the 18-mile mark, her sister and mother came and some friends cheered her on. Strangers came to call out and say encouraging words to her. A Hispanic family stood near their car and clapped. Linda says their little boy said, come on, you can make it. And make it she did. 11 hours after she started, aching black and blue from the jarring of the cuffs, Linda's feet did not go unnoticed as she crossed that finish line. A network radio station host said, her efforts far transcended any performance by any athlete, anytime, anywhere. People from all over the country wrote letters to tell her how much inspiration she had given them and the President of the United States at the time, Reagan, of course, Reagan. Telephone her to invite her to lunch at the White House with the winners of the marathon. To prove it was not a fluke, 
She entered the 19, the 18, uh, 19, uh, 1983 New York City Marathon and better her time by almost two hours. I know this is not easy work here, guys and gals, but I do know that your potential is absolutely remarkable. And I dare say a virtue not tested by the fire is the weakest of all weak things. May the virtue of your intellect and your passion to gain knowledge be demonstrated by being tested by this fire. Now, uh, that's the second step. We're going to call it, you want to call them steps or you want to call them pillars? What do you like better? Pillars, huh? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's a definitive answer right there. That's bang. We're going to call these things pillars then. All right. The third pillar, because we're talking about reality now. We're talking about you leaving here. I know that you freshmen just got here, so let's not rush that part. But leaving here and excelling, you and I must have an I can do attitude. Positive, okay, I mean, that's a little trite to say that we know that. But it really is exactly what it is. Faith in yourself and an I can do attitude. And also, faith in God. The best example that I uh, uh, have for faith, demonstration of faith in God, <clears throat> is when I met a world-famous baseball player in 1977. Wow, man, wow. And uh, he was in Studio D about to be interviewed by J.P. McCarthy. And I walked in. I had three baseballs with me, and I walked in and walked right up to him. I was a little nervous. He was world famous. I said, sir, it's an honor to meet you. I'm Don, to Don Toko. I shook his hand. And I said, sir, I said, would you mind autographing these three baseballs? And he said, yeah, sure. So I had a pen. I gave him a pen. And he started. I said, this one, make that one to Don, you know. So he's signing these, and then I said to him, I'm thinking to myself, I got, I'm sitting, I mean, I'm standing here, I'm with a, in the room with a world famous guy. Gotta ask him something intelligent. I said, sir, may I ask you something? He goes, sure. I said, what characteristics did you develop to become a world famous, world class athlete? And he stopped, he looked at me, and he said, well, he said, I've always had an I can attitude. Oh, I thought to myself, I haven't heard about that. And uh, then without hesitation, he said, oh, he said, and he said, uh, putting my trust in God. He said, you see, when I was really in tough condition physically and didn't know if I could actually get through what was going to be my final season in baseball, and it seemed that people didn't like the idea that I was about to break an amazing record. He said, I had a crushing, crushing feeling in my life. And I wasn't sure I could make it. He said, but that is when I turned my life over to God. And from then on, we always got the job done together. And that's the words of baseball's home run king, Hank Aaron. 755 home runs. Now, for you baseball aficionados, there was a, somebody on drugs that uh, had a few more. But I don't, uh, I don't classify that as a winner. So faith in self, faith in God, and a positive attitude. That's the, those are the first three pillars of the five. So just so I know that you're following along, it's not snoozing on me in the back there. The first pillar is to have a burning desire. Everybody together just have a burning desire. Yeah, you got it, man. Second is to have goals and objectives that are yours. Everybody together? Goals and objectives that are yours. Yours. Yours, not mine. Yours. The fourth pillar. The fourth pillar is pretty simple. And that pillar is to have that passion that we have for life, one of them achieve and accomplish, turn into determination. 
Oh. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, we're going to take this on the road. Yeah, that's good. Okay, guys, that's where the, that's where the rubber meets the, that's where the tires hit the pavement, is when things really, really start getting tough, when you have to push through. Because in the real world, Roger, you're going to find out real soon, and Nate, you guys are going to find out real soon. You get on that real world, man, and all of a sudden, those doors are not opening quite as easy. Now, I look for seven rejections a day. I personally expect seven rejections a day. People are not necessarily our fans. We get a real world. They might be competing with us for the same things. So we expect rejection. But use your determination and persistence to push through those things. And also remember that no failure is ever final. So the baseball team doesn't have all that good, you know, year. Does that mean you give up playing baseball? Something doesn't work and you, you give it up because it didn't, it didn't go the way, exactly the way you wanted. Failure is only temporary if we are willing to go back and improve on who we are and what the contribution is we're trying to make. So those are the four pillars. One more time, it's to have a burning desire. Number two, set goals, objectives. Everybody together. Have objectives. Step number three, faith in self. <laughs> faith in self and faith in God. Faith in self, faith in God. And number four is to have determination. Yeah, that's right. I hope that keeps you awake tonight. You go, man, I'm determined. I can't sleep now. I got to get up and do another paper. And the last thing in this five pillar. Five keys, call it what you like. I like to call it keys, pillars, stepping stones, is we must be willing to take courageous action, action, action. Because if you are not willing to go into action, none of this is going to mean anything. And what holds most people back in their lives. What holds most people back? Anybody? There's one word. Cowardice. Yeah, you got it, man. I was looking for the fear word, but cowardice works. Oh, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. It happens every day. You're in a class. Prof says, you know, who would like to, who'd like to take that? Who would like to handle that question? Ah, you know you know the answer. And you kind of hesitate, and then somebody else jumps up and gets a chance to demonstrate how smart they are. And their answer wasn't half as good as the one you were going to give anyway. What is that thing about, you know, where I can say here, I can look at you, I can pick one person, young lady with a blue shirt over there. So if I ask you, would you come up here and give us a recap of three minutes? You don't have to do that, but did, you, did, you, did it kind of like your heartbeat go up a little bit? Yeah, yeah well, yeah, well, of course. Because, because there's a chance that... Well, we might not always look so good. We might actually not sound as smart as we really are. But anytime you get a chance, my young Hillsdale friends, Chargers, anytime you get a chance where you feel that little gut turn on you or that little bit of fear, I want you to say to yourself, well, there it is. There it is. Go into action. Go into action. You've got dreams, aspirations, things you want to do, you've been hesitating, write them down and go into action. And little by little, it'll be easier to take on those things that are unpleasant, uncomfortable. And one day, you will live free and uncumbered. You will truly live a godly experience, a Christ experience, because you will be without fear. You will be in the presence of love that you have earned. Oh, God loves you and I. By virtue of the fact that we have his grace. But I got to tell you something. I think he likes it when we step up and really say, okay, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to show that I have, I have courage. And then what happens after that, naturally, you become a leader. People start to follow. 
Your confidence grows, and all good things grow with and through that. Until one day, you are there in Congress, Senator, Congresswoman, Congressman, taking on some leadership role. Because if you don't, we're going to keep getting the crooks. You heard that story. I'm not going to give it to you again. So those are the five pillars. And you will not excel greatly in your life unless you employ them on a regular basis. So just so that now you're following along here this evening on this art of your journey, because it is art of your journey, they are, number one, we must possess a burning desire. Number two, goals and objectives that belong to you. Number three, an I can attitude, faith and self, everybody together. I can attitude, faith and self, faith in God. Step number four, we must have determination. And number five, we must be willing to take courageous action. 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 Yeah, that's it now. Okay. Now you got those. Now, with all that said, how in the world can I be sure any of this stuff works? Well, my own life, yes. I can, I can tell you many, many stories until you would all be sleeping very quietly. But I will just read just a couple of, and I have literally thousands of letters from students from all over the world because I, I did speak to students, leaders from every state in America and 70 countries. And I've been doing this for the last 40 years. And this material works because they tell me it does. And I, ha I mean, it's, it's marvelous. It's wonderful, the feedback. Here's one, 15 years ago, Don, Mr. Toko, you generously, generously shared wisdom with me that still impacts me to this day. The success formula, which you gave me, has helped me achieve goals in all aspects and disciplines of life. The results have been immeasurable. Anyone who desires to be a successful person can achieve it by following the principles. Thanks for lighting the fire in me that continues to burn today. That was after 15 years. Tom Kaza. 2005, I received a, a note from one of Hillsdale's finest, captain of the basketball team at the time, a Toko Challenge, sports challenge competitor, who I did edge out at the end. He didn't like it. Who likes to be beat by somebody twice your age? At any rate, he, uh, he writes to me and he says, uh, Dear Mr. Toko, among other things, since your talk, I've used your message of maintaining a positive attitude to drive away fear every time anxiety sets in about a situation that contains the possibility of failure. In doing this, I have developed the confidence to take action Action, action. He was a senior. He had not discerned his career path, but then decided he wanted to become a neurosurgeon. Ben Bixman today is one of the top spine and brain surgeons in the entire state of Nebraska. And he said it all started when he realized he had to deal with the fears and take action. So, are you having anxiety and fears about something that you can take action about? Dave Strasberg writes to me. He said, it's hard to believe that it was over 25 years ago that I was involved in your youth program. I am now, I hap I am now happily married with a one-year-old daughter and have experienced professional success. I have followed my passions to spend time working in professional sports as a professor teaching negotiating and conflict resolution skills, as a business development director for international advertising company. I have earned my master's degree in communication and recently graduated 
from law school. I can genuinely say that your lessons that I learned way back when have helped motiv motivate me every step of the way. So I will tell you, this is not my material, by the way. I didn't make any of this stuff up. I, I, I dare say that if, if I started to claim that I, <laughs> this was my material, my goodness gracious, that would be a great oversight, overstepping the, the fact. But the truth of the matter is, this material works, and I happen to be able to have the honor of putting it together in a cohesive, meaningful way to be able to share it with extraordinary young folks like yourself. So I could go on, there's lots more of these, but that's, that's um, suffice to say it, it does work. It does work when you decide to go into, uh, into your, the realm of your own passions and desires. Now, all seniors, raise your hands one more time. All seniors, please take a copy of this book. It's uh, my, my book, Art of the Journey. You have a copy. It's uh, when you're going, when you're leaving this evening. And uh, also for the um, freshmen, now seniors don't take a copy of this because this is for the freshmen. And, and I say sophomores and juniors as well. If you haven't taken a copy of this, this is entitled, There Are No Grades in the Real World. Hello, no grades, wow, imagine that. There are no grades in the real world. Please take a copy of that when we uh, are departing this evening. And now I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to touch on, well, let me, let me read one. Let me read one piece to you out of my book. May I read one or two poems out of my book? Would that be okay? Okay, thanks. Okay, so I picked uh, four or five, but I'm just gonna read, uh, I'm gonna read two. And read two. In one word, how would you characterize the most important thing in life? One word, how would you characterize what's the most important thing in life? God. <laughs> well, God, yes, yes, yes. But what is God? What is God? Love. Thank you. Okay. So, what is the price? The word, okay, we had two answers here God, and God is love, love. What is the price? What is the price? Here it is. This was written, I won't tell you when I wrote this, but here's the story. They were affluent, so they were shopping, as they did more often than not. After all, money is to be spent. I stood near a window, the one they studied closely. They were considering a large purchase, I was sure, by their tone. Then came my first surprise. <clears throat> one said, I wonder how much it is. I then wondered why price would be of any concern. Soon I was to learn. They were rich. I told you that. Homes, boats, diamonds, other good investments, everything you could ever want, even healthy looking. Anyway, I was more than flattered when they turned to me and chattered, excuse me, do you know the price of that precious item? The one up above. I looked up at the top shelf, puzzled. Which one up above? All I saw was a poster that spelled love. What is the price? What is the price of love? It is the most important thing in the world. It is the most important thing we can have. It's the most important thing we can give. So we need to give it as much as we can. We need to receive it as often as we can. And we need to acknowledge God for its distribution. That's uh, out of my book, Art of the Journey. And I wrote that, what is the price, when I was 21. How many are 21 in this room? Yeah, all right, it's pretty cool. It's probably thinking just like you. Okay, now, something else that uh, sometimes gets lost in the mix, and that is that, okay, you guys are all different and all unique. And in that fact, celebrate that. Celebrate it. A long time ago, when I was 21, we used to call things far out. Far out. 
Okay, and so this is what is far out. Regardless of what some might say, the stars are far out and they're happy. If they weren't, they would move in and be closer. Regardless of what some might say, if you're far out and happy, then baby, stay out. Because being far out makes a lot of stars shine. Shine, my young friends. Let your uniqueness and your personality, let it shine. Be far out. So you have the book. You'll take that home. And then those of you who are not seniors yet, that'll be your gift in uh, next year or two years or three years uh, when you get there. And now we're on the third leg. And very quickly, I'm introducing this evening for the first time ever what I'm calling Art for Scholarship. Art for Scholarship. And uh, what it exactly is, uh, is this innovation. It's very, very simple. How many here are getting any kind of scholarship money? Show of hands. I dare say that's the majority. Is there anybody that isn't getting any? Okay, wow, all right. Suffice to say then, scholarship money is the blood of this college. Why, because you take no money from the federal government. That's one of the things that attracted me here. You take no money from the state government. It is privately funded. That is why today's the day and now is the hour that for your, in your future, you will begin to think about you doing for others what others have done for you. Scholarship, art for scholarship. So what you see here, these pieces of art that I did, these are given, going to be given to Hillsdale College. I give them to Hillsdale College. I take no write-off for the gift. The college then possesses the artwork. An alum who have never given back to this college where they got scholarship money now can be motivated to donate money back for scholarship. 5,000, 10,000, and 15,000. Those are the three categories. And when you become as you start earning money and you want to give back to those coming behind so they can have the benefits of this education that you had due to scholarship money, then you also will be able to pick a, a painting. And I'll be painting more if we run out. You'll be able to pick a painting and take five years to invest in a scholarship. So if it's 5,000, you have five years, obviously simple math, $1,000 a year, if you invest, if you buy something, this painting will go for, this will be, you know, for, this will be 15,000. And there's others. The one, this one on the end here will be 15. That's not 15,000 that goes to me. That's 15,000 donated to Hillsdale College. And the person who donates it will be able to pick a painting that is in some cases worth as much as the donation. So it's really a pretty good deal. What do you think of the idea? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, you guys are great. You guys, I'm excited. You like the idea. I told Dr. Ryan, even Dr. Ryan liked the idea. Servini liked the idea. Yeah, what do you got to lose? It's a good idea. So hopefully um, we'll, have, um, we'll have lots of folks who are now in the workforce wanting to give back for scholarship money as they received. Um, the, um, uh, you've got a remarkable, you know, amazing, un, un, unparalleled group of professors. Are there any professors here this evening? Are there any coaches here this evening? Any coaches here tonight? I wanted to bring your attention to um, some of these amazing men and women. I, I, I'm telling you, they're just the, the greatest. Uh, I've learned much from them as well, and uh, I may be trying out uh, for the uh, basketball team next year. I have two. Uh, I have two years of uh, eligibility left. Who, who just laughed? Who laughed at me? <laughs> so, when it, so, actually, I, I tried out for the baseball team. 
uh, in 2006 and uh, made the team, but I uh, had a little problem that year. We had a really, really big, big year in my business, and it would have cost me a lot of money to come to school here. Uh, but um, you have great, great, great coaches, great professors, a great admin. Uh, you know, Dr. Arn is, is truly one of a kind. I really do admire him and love him. And you are really fortunate to have him as a leader, and I think he's going to be around for a, a long time. So let's go back to the beginning. And we honored Ted Andrus, my friend who passed away January 4th. And he said, young people, thank God for every day because it's a gift. Be looking forward, not backward. The word that will keep you on track for developing your best possible self is a Greek word, and the word is arete. arete. What a lovely word. One more time. Arete. 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 Check it out. It's in the gym on the jam equipment. Maintain your faith in God, your positive attitude. Set your goals. Make sure they're your goals. Because that's what will light your fire. And what's that thing we call about lighting the fire that really will get us going? You and I must possess a burning desire. <clears throat> Guys, you got just one more shot at it. I'm giving you one more shot to excel. Come on, everyone. It's to have a burning desire. Oh, so awesome, so awesome. And never, never give up. Use that D, everybody together, determination. <clears throat> and then we will go out and we will confidently take courageous, everybody together, action, action, action. And your world will change for the better. And this world will change for the better. And just maybe America will sustain and endure. There is only one thing left for us to do. And that is, let's go out and make it happen. Come on. Thank you, guys. Come on. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Great audience, great audience, great group. If there's any questions, I don't know. It's, and listen, I want to tell you this. I really appreciate you coming this evening. And I know that I'm donating to your groups and organizations, and it's beneficial for you. But I'm telling you something. When I was driving up here today on this beautiful 23rd of April, I'm thinking to myself, no one is going to want to be in that building listening to me for an hour on a night like this. Beautiful night like this. So thank you for taking the time. Yeah. So any questions, I'm more than happy to, you know, one or two or five or ten, whatever, whatever you, if you have any questions. Any, does, he, does somebody have a microphone? Oh, sure. She'll go right ahead. Excuse me while I have a Rubio moment. Is that water? <coughs> What's in that? <coughs> wow. Yes, I'm sorry. Hi, my name's Teresa Smith. I'm Hi, Teresa. Hillsdale Chargers swim team. <coughs> Outstanding. Um, my question for you is, while you are busy with your job and everything, how do you find time to do the things you say, like work out and do these paintings? Where do you find time to do that? Yeah, that's a, that's a, really, that's a good question. It's a real fundamental question. Uh, the answer is simple. I mean, really simple. We have 24 hours. We have 24 hours in a day. It's a lot of hours. Now, you're going to have to set aside some time to sleep. And I don't know what that is for you, but for me, it's always been around six or less. So I've got 18 hours. You know, I can work very effectively eight, nine hours. And that gives me time to work out, to paint, to sculpt, to read. The tra I mean, you, you just, you have, you just, but you have to take charge of your calendar. And I, I used to literally, by Friday afternoon, by Friday afternoon, I knew exactly where I was going to be 
the following week from 7 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock at night. I knew exactly what I was going to be doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's called time management. And it is powerful. And if you will not waste too much of that time, you will be astounded at how much more can accomplish. Thank you. Yes, any other question? Any question? Any question? Any questions? But yes. You know, you know what? That's uh, I, I actually do kind of like my paintings. <laughs> I, I, I like I like the one that's on the cover. I like I like the one that's on the cover. Uh, you know, I guess maybe the better question is which one do you guys like best. Yes. My mother loved that one. My mother loved that one. So I painted that. I painted that for my mom in 2006 when my mother was, was passing away. And she had about 40 days. I mean, we didn't know how long she had, but we knew she was passing. And so I went to see her every single day. At the end of the day, after work, I'd spend a few hours with her, and on the weekends, I'd spend time with her Saturday, Sunday. And then at night, I would go home at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and I would paint a painting. Sometimes it would take a couple days, and I would take the painting the next day because she had a spot in her condominium on, on the wall there that it needed a painting. And I said, Ma, I said, you should have a painting on that. And she goes, well, she says, you going to paint one for me? I said, yeah, I'll paint one. So the first one, she looked at it, and she said, hmm, I don't think those colors match. I said, yeah, I, I agree. And then I painted something else. And she said, mm, yeah, you know, it just doesn't have that that feeling, I, I, I just, I, I'm sorry, she says, I don't mean it. I said, that's okay, Ma, you don't like it, I get it, I get it. So finally, after six pieces, I gave her that one, and she goes, she goes, did you really do that? <laughs> yeah, so that, that, I suppose that's would be the, that's probably 20 grand, I'm sorry. That's probably gonna be available for, you know, one of you shooters knocking it out of the park in three or four years. Thank you. Yeah. So that's uh, I. Yeah. Did you did you guys see some of the other paintings that, that are popping up on the inside? Oh, well, I, I can't see the screen. Oh, there's a sculpt. I did, that's, is, is that Malali over there? That's the. Uh, he was the CEO of Ford Motor Company. He he saved the United. He saved he saved the Ford Motor Company from going out of business, and he saved America from having uh, going into a deep uh, recession. He's a very dear friend, very good friend of mine. And that painting went into the, oh, that sculpt went into the Automotive Hall of Fame uh, this past summer in a formal event uh, along with the four uh, recipi recipients of the 2017, that, that last summer, 2017 Automotive Hall of Fame. So I have four sculptures now in the Automotive Hall of Fame, if you're ever in Dearborn. Yeah. Anything else? Any other questions? Yes. Uh, it's it's to it's to in part be non-judgmental. Uh, it's 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 to love the unlovable in people, because we all have weaknesses, and it's easy to uh, it's easy to diss people because they they don't live up to our expectations, and you sh we should have high expectations, right, for our, our friends, right? So uh, so it's 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 being a friend to someone. Uh, and loving someone uh, who is imperfect, because we are all indeed imperfect, right? Isn't that a reflection of how Christ operated, right? Yeah? Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Good, very good question. You guys have the best questions. Wow, like two years ago. Was that two years? Who was here two years ago? You guys said it was so many great questions. And then uh, the other thing, the other thing, and I'm gonna, I, have to, I have to comment on this again. Like, I mean, I'm just amazed that, I mean, nobody has left here tonight. I mean, you know, we are done. I mean, <laughs> you, if you have to go somewhere. But it's so nice of you, so thoughtful of you to stay, and, and uh, so thoughtful, thank you. Yeah, yeah, any, any question over here? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you guys, yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? 
Oh, I know what I wanted to say. Uh, seniors uh, that are here tonight, um, how many of you, oh, would you all, could you stand again one more time? Seniors stand real quick. Okay. Okay. Well, don't, don't, well, don't, don't, don't sit down yet. Wait, wait, don't sit down yet. Don't, don't sit down yet. So seniors who are standing, uh, uh, if you have a job already, go ahead and sit down. And, and, and those of you who don't have a job yet, don't sit, don't sit down. Okay, no, do it the other way. No. Okay, so here's the, here's the reason I'm, I'm, I'm going to say is if, if you can, if you want a, a, to use me as a reference, that's why I wanted to see you so I would know who you are. If you want to use me for a reference, uh, please do so. But you have to email me and, and tell me who you are and, and what you applied for and, and, and send, your, send your resume. So when somebody calls me, I, I'm not caught flat-footed. You know, I will give you, I will give you, I will look at your resume and I will give you a reference. And I will tell you when I give references, uh, they're good. <laughs> they're real good. So, 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 okay, so any of you that don't have a job and you're applying and you need, you need a reference, you can use me. Okay? Oh, you're welcome, guys. Yeah. Oh, thank you. We're in it. Hey, you know what? We're in it. We're in it together. 16 years, 16 years. And I plan on uh, doing everything I can for as long as I can, as long as I'm, as long as I'm making sense, <laughs> and as long as Dr. Arndt doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't give me the boot. Okay, any other questions? If not, uh, we will uh, adjourn and, and we'll say God bless you, and I expect only great and wonderful things for you in your lives. And by the way, also, please, please, as you are succeeding in life, shoot me a note Tell me what's happening in your life so that I can quote you. Um, you know, not only here at Hillsdale, I've been invited just uh, Wednesday to uh, Loyola University uh, to a uh, reunion, a 50-year reunion. It's not mine. I, I'm not that old. Don't look at me like that. I'm not that old. No. It's a 50-year reunion uh, of an international leadership program. And so these youngsters from all over the world will be coming to Loyola for four days. And uh, I spoke to many of them. I spoke to this uh, international leadership organization 23 years in a row. So a lot of those young guys and gals that were very young then, 15, 16, are now, you know, 30, 40, 45 years old. And uh, so uh, they've actually invited me to come back and do the keynote. And then I'll get a chance to hear about you know their success stories, but I will also be, you know, I'll also be reviewing some others and sharing them. So I need I need your story. I need your your tremendous story. Boy, they're going to be tremendous. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. God bless. Yeah.